Welcome to From the Couch with your host, Corey Wazinski. And this week, could it be Alex Foster? No, don't go back to sleep, Corey. It's time to do the show. Welcome to a new segment on From the Couch, Platonic Pal. A lot of my friends are uh, very near and dear to me, and I love them, but in a non-romantic way. Our first platonic pal is Alex Foster. Hey. Hey. A uh, cool thing about Alex Foster is we also were roommates together for how long was it? Uh, two, two years. Was it two years? Uh, just about. Two just years, about, yeah. yeah. So we were doing that, but... I, if I remember, you were not painting miniatures two oh, years ago. No, no. So, how did you how'd you get into the hobby, and what what were some uh, some traps you fell into, and some things you would say to stay away? Uh, so, I got into miniature painting um, probably about oh, six months before the pandemic started. I quickly expanded into pretty much any miniature that seemed remotely interesting. Right. Uh, you know, I started with things that kind of made sense with what I was doing, like like wizards and, and skeletons. I did a bunch of skeletons initially, and then I just went off the rails. Right. <laughs> Anything I could put a backstory to. Well, that's what, um, it, that's what it got, like, really fun. My Arctic Explorer. I got my Merlin. Oh, like, um, wow. my Merlin, I love it because he's based on uh, the Sword in the Stone Merlin. Yep. So he has little Archimedes on his shoulder. Uh, I also have uh, a Fright Bag, which is based on Scary Terry from uh, Rick and Morty. <laughs> my uh, dwarf on a pony that's inspired by Ron uh, Swanson yep. from Parks and Rec riding a little Sebastian-inspired <laughs> pony, which is just like... It's, I did not think it was going to be good, and I am still impressed that I ever painted that. Oh, so. my God. But, yeah, um, between Danny, my girlfriend, and I, we've painted probably about 40 or 50 miniatures. That's awesome. So, yeah. Uh, how many of those are skeletons? Um, only, I want to say, like, eight or nine. Eight or nine. So, okay. I, I bought a set of skeletons to start, and I painted all of them kind of uniform. Four, six, eight, ten. So I have at least sixty or seventy paints in here. That's crazy. Um, you have more paints than miniatures. Yeah. Well, yeah, I like having a, a variety of issues. We started uh, with Aho Paint, paint uh, which is a popular, popular brand you that you can find online. They actually have relationships, have relationships with a couple of your companies. And then I'm expanding out, out Citadel, which is the which one that does him. paints. And, um, and Citadel has beautiful technical paints. paints. So uh, this is uh, Valhalla Val Val Blizzard. So mm. it actually is a texture that is like snow. So it's not quite like paint. It's more like this little, um, like, texture that you can pat onto right. surfaces to create the, the like quality of snow. So you basically just take that and you pat it on and it creates snow and then it dries into that position. So that, you, you, that's blowing my mind I right mean, now. It blows my <laughs> mind every time I use it. So with the Arctic Explorer, I actually went in and I, I did all of the base in snow. Like I, I painted white over it, but then I went in and put the snow texture. And then I went in and I put little snow on his shoulders and oh, on the right. top of his hat so it looks like he's been walking while it's been snowing. And he's clearly armed, too, yeah. in case he runs into a game. I have a Yeti that it sits on the shelf with him that's like right behind oh, him. Oh, I like love that. Like mid-claw action. We are going to be painting um, one of the... Uh, things that I've been finding is, uh, like, Buy of the Month Club, and there's one called... All right, let's see, Art of Craig Snodgrass, Robot of the Month Club, members receive reduced cost, Craig Snodgrass. Oh, man, I gotta check this out. Uh, Thunderbirds. Uh, ooh, this guy's interesting. Yes, liking... Whoa, wait. Hello. Oh, cool. So I purchased a couple harvesters. 
one for each of us. Now, I've never painted. Yeah. Uh, I've never painted miniatures. I've done very little painting. Uh-huh. I do digital painting, um, which is which is painting uh, <laughs> in its own way. But I'm wondering if maybe we turn the audience around <laughs> and they watch <laughs> us paint. Oh, for sure. Well, uh, well they, they can judge us. Yes, uh, from like know, a far. Keep them all in all ways away here. And Fright Bag, of course, haunting our dreams. Yep. Oh my God! Isn't he terrifying? Yes. Yeah, the yellow eyes, just uh, incredible. That uh, he's is one of my favorites, but uh, something. And we always know that's scary, Terry. Welcome to your nightmare, bitch. What would you say to a beginner painter? I definitely recommend having a nice, bright. LED light with a flexible arm okay. that you can pose so that you can see those details because it looks different in different light. So it helps to have a bright light that you can actually see it in. And with the, uh, I'm, I want to say Gondo High Harvester, so hopefully I got that right. If not, we'll definitely, you'll definitely see it coming out correctly. <laughs> um, I came up with an idea. Uh, I'm also happened to be showing off what the theme is. Uh, but Bioshock is one of my favorite video games. Um, the first one, uh, still uh, very near and dear to some excellent memories. Played it first time in college with one of my uh, one of my friends, and I just love the idea of an underwater dystopian uh, city. From a different time. Uh, one approach could be that you could do the whole thing in metal. Um, you could choose to do uh, like he has these beautiful mid sections. You could do those in like like a silver right. or a, like a gun metal color. Um, but then do the exterior in a metal, and then go in and like dirty it up, and maybe try to do like an algae-ish stain on it using the jade green. This all sounds great. I mean, this is just what's. <laughs> What's coming to mind? Um, if you don't want to go the metal route, you could just go full into the jade green, see how it looks then, and then decide. You know, do I want to texture it? Do I what? Like, what is he made of? Right. Yeah. Well, let's see what we're made of. Um, <laughs> and yeah, I say let's uh, let's get to painting. Sure. Yeah. So let me uh, hook you up with some brushes, and you can just share my water here if you want. All right. Um, I think it's always important to have some water. Get a mug you hate, fill it with water. It's going to get crusted with paint, so there's no reason not to. And then when it comes to brushes, I honestly, I went to Joanne's. I bought a variety. I tried to get the finest tip brushes I could because I kept needing fine tip brushes. But even just to start on a piece that's this big, I would start with a nice big brush. Okay. Yeah, so that uh, we can cover as much ground as we need to. And then uh, I just use one of those little um, plastic yeah. uh, palettes. Yeah. And then I just cover it with foil. So once it starts getting way too intense with paint, I strip off the foil. It's perfectly clean. Put a new layer, layer of foil on. Okay. And that's, I mean, that's a lazy poor man's palette. I like so, it. Uh, yeah. And then uh, keep a paper towel handy so that you can wipe off excess paint if okay. you need to. And then, uh, yeah. Um, that's really all there is to it. What color do you want to start with? I would say, let's go with the, I like what you were saying about the midsection, mm-hmm. um, and accentuating that with like either gunmetal and maybe that's become rustic over mm-hmm. time because it's been sitting in water. Okay. So your gunmetal is like a darker gray, Okay, uh, but it's a metallic gray. Okay. Um, and then you have like a, um, like a chain mail silver, which is a brighter, Ooh. um, it's got a luster to it. You can always go in and darken it later if okay. you want it as a base. I like that as a, as a luster. Yeah. And then what do these? So they're little droppers. Okay. So all you're doing is you're shaking it and then you're going to do, you don't need much. So I just did a couple of drops, Mm -hmm. and that's going to start you off. And then um, I'm actually going to give you a smaller brush because we're going to do joints here. Going to get into them joints. Yeah. Uh, Let's do this guy. Um, You kind of want to pick the brush that's going to give you the versatility you want for the area. Right. So, like, if you were doing the whole outside, I would do this guy because he's big. Because he's big. But because you're starting with the joints, yeah, I would do something a little finer. 
And then it's really helpful. Which one were you going to paint? I'm going to paint the purple guy. Cool. It's helpful to think of working from the hardest to reach places outward. Okay. So, you know, when I do faces, I start with the eyes first. And then I do the face oh, itself. Oh, how interesting. Because I would it, think the opposite. Yeah. Well, can you imagine trying to get in no. and do the eye after having done the whole rest of the face? And then you like hit the hit the yeah. eyebrow or something and yeah. you got to start over. Yeah. So I like to work from the hardest to reach places, like those little nooks. Okay. And then kind of work my way out. And there is a link in the description uh, if you want to check out Craig's art. Um, he has a Robot of the Month Club, and he also has where if you just want to pick up some of the, the reject pieces, yeah. the, the misfit toys, if you will. experimenting when it comes to like that um, weathering effect. Right. It's, it takes a little bit of practice. Also, I really wanted to get, uh, the next level for me is definitely going to be creating light sources. Oh yeah. So when I paint, I tend to work on the principle that I have one light source that is directly above, in front of my finger. I like so that. So the light always comes right down on the front of it. Uh, but it's kind of vague, boring, neutral light. It's, you gotta start somewhere. Yeah, though. you gotta start somewhere. So when you get more experienced, you can do things like, like I have a guy who's holding a tour, or like a lantern. I could make that lantern into a light source. Right. Which means I'd have to have it cast some yellowish light on the figure itself. Right, your highlights. Yeah, but that's, it's challenging because we don't want to just put straight up yellow. No.
Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Gorin Brothers, established 1895. Now, a little backstory. Gorin Brothers is my favorite, careful because I'm using a knife, there we go. My favorite, careful because I'm using a knife, there we go. Favorite haberdashery. And I am aware of many of their fine and well-crafted hats. Always cut away from you. As my dad taught me when I was younger. So, put the knife away. Ooh, I got some tape on the knife. I don't want that. There's the click. Now I know it's safe. They are original San Francisco uh, hat maker. They now have over 60 different locations. Um, unfortunately, their um, they're one in Studio City closed down. That was one that was closest to me at the time, but no longer. Being sick, I had to leave my apartment uh, very quickly um, because I live with my dad, who's my caretaker. Hi, Zoe! My cat says hello. It's not my cat, it's my dad's cat. As far as anyone's concerned, but um, I had probably about eight different hats, even a hat box. A uh, cool little fact, you can bring a hat box on a plane as a carrier item. Um, which has the same rules as a backpack or a teddy bear. If you're eight years old or an emotionally um, uh, caring adult that still loves their teddy bear. Packing slip. Oh. Ladies and gentlemen, the Phil Jones. Ah. Oh, she is gorgeous. So, this is a large, I am a large, um, big noggin. Uh, but also, too, what's nice about Gorin Brothers is they let you try on the hats when you're in the store. Um, and if you bring in one of your hats from their shop, they also have an online presence. Uh, they will clean it for you, and steam it, and brush it, and everything like that. So let's get rid of this box. Whoop! Oh! <laughs> that. Ouch! I gotta be careful how much I twist. But that right there, that's the Phil Jones. So, thank you so much, Gorham Brothers, for always making incredible products. And, uh... Let's see what's coming up next. Is the edit happening from the left or from the right? Okay, the right. Let's see what's happening. That's the left. Let's see what... Oh, it's going right to left. Got it. So let's, let's see what's happening. Can I? Can we try this again? Okay. Zoe. Hi, Zoe. No, I know that we're filming, but my the cat is just too cute. Well, hopefully I'll show footage uh, when she's closer by. Uh, she's five years old, and she kind of keeps to herself. Um, she also follows my dad as the alpha male. Oh, is that too much information? Unnecessary information. Got it, got it. Well, let's, let's see. Okay, what's the line? Let's see what's happening next. And what am I saying? Let's, let's see what's happening next. Let's see what's happening next. We're back. Hello. This is, I'm with my neck pillow. This is Alex Foster. He's, a, he's hi, painting hi, hi, minis. Hi. We're painting minis together. So what are you doing right now? So I went in with uh, Agrax Earthshade, which is a shade. I'll put it in front of all the cameras so that <laughs> everyone can see it. Uh, it is a Citadel shade. Um, it is uh, designed specifically kind of an oil. It's a darker color. I'm basically going in and I'm covering everything I've already done with it. And it's creating these beautiful little pools of dark color 
in the cracks and crevices and it's making him way dirtier so if you look at his legs compared to his head right now like this is brand new shiny this is i'm kind of grody shiny right uh it's a great nice easy way to uh give give it depth and give it texture and personality um so you know like i use this there's one called moln oil moln oil is beautiful and perfect in my dream it's just a black but it's an oil so it gives everything a contrast immediately oh wow so yeah uh when i'm painting like i bought a set of these i have i have like a, a purple an orange a brown i have a red well that's another hyperx so there there are all colors for all different kind of moods there's like a sepia uh a flesh shade which is kind of a reddish so like for skin, you'll do a skin tone, and then you'll just throw on the flesh shade, and it's suddenly like the face has depth. It's wow. Beautiful. I've got a night shade, which is like a blue. Ooh, I'll use so, that. Yeah, yeah. And then a uh, Karaberg Kara Crimson, which is like a red purple. Ooh. Ooh. So, uh, all oh, of I these, don't know. All of these bring a lot of personality into it. also have built-in green which is a green Ooh. so yeah i would say um you know, use whatever whatever calls to you i, I almost i almost see the shades as being uh different places of where the uh the environment the water because these are these are sunken in a frozen city yeah um as the as the Artifact starts to break down, um, and the artifice the wooden cables are starting to show and show wear and tear. I think different shades would happen. Oh, interesting. Um, so you want to you use a variety of yes, shades? Yes, kind of. Fun. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> it will also be an interesting lesson in like how these colors way off each other. Yeah, and now and then I can. It'll be also like it'll be nice to have a finger to say like, here's what worked. Yeah. <laughs> here's what didn't. So that's what I mean. I used the, the purple and then a little bit of the and then I yep and then I did orange with a little purple and then I was like oh I think I got it. I swear uh, a lot of people have a much clearer natural understanding of color than I do. Uh, so I He's got a little reactor. He totally head. has a reactor yeah, on his yeah. back. Yeah. So this is a new. This is a, a ticking time bomb. Small nuclear reactor underneath the ocean. He's 
his little nuclear submarine. He's a nuclear. Yep. So he's a nuclear reactor, and he's starting to um, blister. It's a. It's an underwater Chernobyl. Well, we're gonna keep painting, um, but we'll see you in a little bit. So he is now bones. So I almost, I almost see okay. like, um, like flecks of yellow. Do you have like a, a luminescent uh, paint? Oh. Yes. Uh, yeah, he's he's been through it. Of course he has. That's awesome. He's painted by uh by someone who's very sick. Well, that is, uh, we painted some miniatures. We did. We did. Yeah. Uh, tell us a little bit about what you, uh, what you got. So, uh, I don't know where I started. I thought I was going with, like, the same deep sea thing. But what I actually seem to have ended up with is what, what I can only describe as a honey bot. Uh, I believe that he is powered by bees. And that in his head is some kind of bear or badger or squirrel of some kind that operates him in order to cut down beehives and fuel either himself or his, I don't know, his squirrel friends. So uh, he's got this beautiful honeycomb <laughs> color. Uh, I'm just really, like, he's a handsome, handsome robot. I, I love it. And I love the fact that he's uh, he's a worker bot. Yeah. Um, I went with a underwater um, nuclear reactor ticking time bomb. Um, I don't have a name for this guy, so I'm just going to come up with, with it now. His name is um, uh, Jlor, and it's JL00R, but because of the algae, uh, his name has come off. So he is the jailer because what happens is a lot of fish get trapped in there. Um, and that reactor, it could blow any time. Yeah. Well, Alex, thank you so much for being the first platonic pal. Of course. I'm so delighted to get to share this ridiculous hobby with you. Uh, I, it's been a, a true blast. Yeah. Um, thank you so much to our uh, man behind the scenes, Ian Carroll. Shout out to Ian. Thank you so much. Yay. We love our tech. And um, you're going to put these, uh, you're going to come up with some bases? Yeah, and... I'm going to create some bases for these. So we'll get to see some some afters once they've been staged. Perfect. Um, and, and hopefully we'll have some some fun uh, fun things to see once, once we've done that. I love it. Well, um, uh, from uh, Platonic Pals uh, to From the Couch, uh, we'll... Uh, We'll, this will be a new segment, so we'll just see how it goes. And uh, yeah, thanks so much for being here, man. Thank you for yeah. having me. We'll cut it right there. Yeah, we will. during the day, but remember the first time, first rule about from the couch, it's always time for a nap. So I want to say thank you to Alex Foster, uh, my platonic pal, uh, first one of who knows how many I'll do, um, but new segment, thank you to Ian Carroll, who was the uh, camera operator for that whole um, segment. Of course, to um, my uh, digital designer and uh, uh, potentially getting a promotion, Leanna Dindal. Um, she's an executive producer. Leanna, I don't have time to make 
new credits because the episode's supposed to come out like in a few hours uh, tonight. Um, but yeah, this was um, this was a huge undertaking, and I didn't. Uh, there were some times where I thought uh, maybe I wouldn't be able to finish it or or anything like that. But um, sometimes you even surprise yourself. Ooh, that would be a good. Uh, Good thing to end on, but I forgot to thank Alex Kahn and Arlo Sanders for the music, and uh, my family and friends for all the support. Um, so, right now at 10:28 in the morning, it's time for a nap. Good night. Yep, still bright. Is, uh, was it still recording? It didn't. What? Oh, it didn't record any of that. Did it record on here? It's Recording, yeah. Okay, we can stop it.